What's up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and today I'm back at it to bring you more facts on the Warhammer 40k universe. This time, we are diving yet again to the Warhammer 30k era, where we will cover the dreaded Dreadnoughts. More specifically, the Duretio Pattern Dreadnought. Um, at first, I didn't like the look of this guy, uh, but the more I look at it, the more it grows on me. Uh, it's basically just a freaking heavy weapons mobile platform with a dude <laughs> stuck inside. Um, pretty badass. So without further ado, let's jump into the lore on the Duretio Pattern Dreadnought. This Dreadnought is an Imperial Pattern cybernetic combat walker used by the Space Marine Legions during the days of the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy. The Duretio Pattern Dreadnought has served as a cybernetic sarcophagus for an Astartes warrior who had been so badly wounded in battle that his only chance for continued service to the Emperor lay in being interred within the cybernetic sarcophagus of a Dreadnought. The Duretio Dreadnought, much like the technology developed at the dawn of the Imperium of Man, is larger and more powerful than the more common Pattern Dreadnoughts used in present day. This pattern of Dreadnought was developed as an outgrowth of the same project to improve upon the fusion of Terran and Mechanicum technology, which gave birth to the first Legion of Stardust Dreadnoughts, such as the Lucifer pattern. It shares many core components and systems with the hugely successful Contemptor class, but rather than a general assault unit, the Duretio is an expressively designed heavy weapon platform intended to combine superior firepower with flexibility and durability of a dreadnought. Deployed in limited numbers for each of the legions, the Duretio was treated as a specialist unit as it provides highly resource intensive armament. However, it is undoubted to survive and kill almost anything in battle. The standard loadout for the Duretio consists of a set of twin-linked Anvilus pattern autocannons, known as the Anvilus autocannon battery, and a set of carapace-mounted twin-linked heavy bolters. The heavy bolters could be replaced with a set of twin-linked heavy flamers, or an Alois missile launcher, which could be mounted on top of its carapace. With its formidable carrying capacity and battlefield sleep ability, the Duretio was used as a testbed for a number of advanced weapon systems. Chief amongst its anti-vehicle armaments was the Arachnus Heavy Last Cannon Battery. The Duretio can also be outfitted with smoke launchers, a searchlight, extra armor plating, or armored ceramite plating. The Duretio pattern shares the Contemptor pattern system of defensive energy field generators inside of its armor plating, and it is powered by the enhanced automatic power core within. The Hel Heliacal targeting array advanced augury and sophisticated banks of combat conjugators allow the Duretio to track and destroy even the swiftest targets with ease. However, due to the Heliacal array's delicacy and ravenous consumption of power, the Duretio must be immobile while the system is in operation. The Duretio also sports the automatic Palviase, a highly experimental system developed by the Clav Nuothak subcult magi of the Forge World of Anvilus. The automatic Palviase was created with Zone Mortalis operations in mind, and the idea of turning the Duretio pattern dreadnought into a mobile bulwark against the heaviest enemy weapons fire. And now let's get more in depth to the war gear of this awesome behemoth, starting with the Duretio Pattern Ilos Missile Launcher. Mounted onto the carapace of the Duretio Pattern Dreadnought, the Ilos Missile Launcher, which with its sophisticated targeting system, can track targets independently from the primary weapon systems, regardless of intervening terrain. The Ivalis Autocannon Battery one of the primary weapon systems of the Duretio is a primary twin-linked Anvilus autocannon battery, which it can mount on its arms. The fearsome development of the autocannon can engage and destroy armored targets with a punishing salvo of firepower. The Arachnus Heavy Last Cannon Battery The Duretio Pattern Dreadnought is a dedicated heavy support frame though it shares many core components and systems with its Contemptor class battlesuit. 
With its formidable carrying capacity and battlefield sleepability, the Diretio was used as a testbed for many weapon systems, such as the Arachnus Heavy Last Cannon Battery, which in and itself is a more powerful Last Cannon variant of this awesome weapon. And finally we have my favorite, the Diretio Dreadnought Hellfire Plasma Cannonade. A development of existing plasma-based weapon technology, the Hellfire Plasma Cannonade was one of a number of weapons first tested using the Diretio pattern chassis. It sacrifices the range of the Diretio standard armaments for increased armor penetration and it allows for a higher rate of fire more than any other plasma weapon. Now normally this would be the end of the video but uh, I found some awesome, I guess, trivia, if you could call it that, based on the Rogue Trader times of GW. So uh, here we go. The original Dreadnought classes released by Games Workshop were utilized by both the Space Marines and the Imperial Guard. These classes included the Furry Bundus, the Doradio, and the Contemptor Patterns, each of which possessed different weapon configurations. There were a selection of arms, a single or double bolter, a last cannon or a missile launcher, which fitted onto the body, wide or narrow, which in turn could have either long or short legs. The earlier variant of the Doretio class attack support dreadnought was nicknamed Eddie, and it carried the standard armament of a bolter and a missile launcher. Each limb had his own targeting program, both crack and frag missile ammunitions, and the Doretio pattern dreadnought also carried a standard sensor package, two defensive power fields, and a power field synchronizer. So that's pretty cool there. You see the old school designs. Uh, in my opinion, not really too cool. <laughs> I like the newer one better. But anyway, guys, that's all I have for the lore on the Doretio dreadnought. So this was a short but sweet lore on one of my now favorite <laughs> Uh, contempt we're not contemptor, but uh forge world dreadnought patterns um yeah i didn't like the whole look of it i thought it was too bulky up top not much going on on the bottom but uh it, it grew on me it grew on me let me know what you guys think about the Doretio. do you guys prefer the leviathan or the contemptor um also forge world or not forge world but a uh, gw on their warhammer community page just released some information as to the uh stats and the uh, data sheet on the Leviathan Dreadnought. So go over there and check it out. We also have it posted on our Facebook page. So uh, check that out guys. Also don't forget to head on over to our other social media sites such as Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon where we've got some more 40k content for you. And like I said guys that's all I've got for you guys today. I'll catch you tomorrow. As always this has been the Sound Alchemist part of One Mind Syndicate and I am signing out. Oh, <laughs>